All right, this video is going to start with a guide to every monster and threat in the game, and then a guide on beating the ridge in the searchlight's final encounter. Personally, I think this game should be played without a guide, but this video is kind of for the people who have played the game for a while and they can't figure something out and they need a little bit of help. So first up, we got Froger. I think that's how you say it. He makes ghostly sounds, kind of whispering, but loud. He'll stop at the end of the room that you're currently in, and then he'll return, and then later he'll come back. It takes a while, but he will come back every time. Here's an example of just the game audio so you can kind of get an idea of what he actually sounds like. Blitz actually has like the most obvious sign out of any of them because he just flickers the lights way longer. It's super easy to notice. Uh, he makes a static sound that's like really far away, doesn't get closer. And if you have a really fast reaction time, then you can wait until you hear him screaming, but I would recommend hiding before that. Pinky is usually only tricky when it comes to loud areas or water areas. Pinky doesn't flicker the lights, so the only way to know when she's coming is to listen for screaming, which she is pretty loud. This is one of the main reasons that turning your game volume up is a pretty good idea when you're playing this game. Also, usually you can hear her spawn and like it'll be pretty obvious that it's Pinky. So Chainsmoker has a really distinct sound, it's like echoey metal clanking sounds. His main thing is that he moves really slow and he forces you out of your locker so you have to wait really long to start hiding or else he'll kick you out. So Pandemonium is, of course, one of the trickier ones. Um, he sounds like distant wailing. It's kind of like a higher pitched version of uh, Chainsmoker. It may sound like he's approaching slowly, but once he gets into your room, he will appear and like instantly come at you. Also, unlike the anglers, when he gets closer, he doesn't get super loud unless he sees you. If you didn't already know this from encountering him, Pandemonium, just like will always find you if you aren't in a locker. Personally, I think hiding without a locker is never worth it unless you're trying to get the badge and it only really works if you're in a vent or in a side room that keeps you like completely hidden from the hallway. I did it. Good people are extremely easy to avoid once you like know all the main signs that point towards them being in the room. Also good people never spawn in rooms that are completely full of water. 
So obviously the first sign of a good people door would be the breathing, but if the background is too loud what? to hear the breathing, then the next best way to find out would be to look at the door number to see if it sparks. If you're in a dark room and the room number for the next door is lit up, it will always be a good people door. Good people doors will never have their lights go out. The most difficult part about wall dwellers is their audio cue. When a wall dweller spawns, it will always be behind you and it will always be the same sound, which is like a slimy wet noise. Once you understand this audio cue, all you have to do is look at it. If an angler happens to come by at the same time as a wall dweller, and you can actually go to the wall dweller's body and pick up a piece of it to eat and you'll get regen for this the match. The last two clips are actually outdated because the wall dweller now makes a way scarier sound when it gets spotted. Pressure's turrets are literally like every single other game if you've ever played Fortnite or Lethal Company or even Content Warning. Just stay out of their line of sight and they won't shoot you. In every room that has turrets there will also be a lever that you can pull that's usually behind the turrets or something that just deactivates them. But this isn't always necessary and sometimes it's just a waste of time to do. This clip is a good example of an especially tricky situation with a turret. It's also worth noting that in some turret rooms it'll seem like you have to get shot in order to get to the lever, which is usually fine. You can get shot a few times. Eye festation is usually never a problem on its own, but when it gets mixed with something else like the lights flickering, that's when it becomes a problem. It can be pretty hard to remember, but whenever this happens to you, you should always retreat to the room behind you to hide. But if you're already like halfway through the room, then you might as well just go to the next room ahead and then hide. After getting out of a room that has eye festation in it, the first thing you should do is listen for anything. This is especially important in the ridge, but before you hide, you should always check for void mass. If you're too close to the locker when you check, sometimes the purple can be hidden, so you should always back up when you're looking for it. So, non-locker hiding spots are usually pretty straightforward. If you're out of sight, then most things just will not see you. All of the yellow rooms are always going to be completely safe from all the angler types. This also applies to any vent system or anything where you're like underneath the actual hallway. Literally every type of side room will keep you safe from the angler types, but just keep in mind that this doesn't apply to pandemonium. Also, there are a lot of hiding spots that are like completely unexpected that you would never normally use unless you were desperate like I was in this situation. But these kind of hiding spots can be pretty inconsistent, so I would never rely on them. Also, the last thing I want to mention is that 
if you get into a room that only has a vent, like no doors, then that means that you cannot hide in that vent because the angler will come through it. The only thing you really need to worry about in flooded areas is that the noise is obviously going to be muffled, so pinky is harder to hear, as well as like literally everything else. Just listen carefully and don't jump to conclusions until you are sure about something. Quick bonus tip, key cards emit a static sound that's pretty quiet, you can only hear it when you get close, but if you don't want to search everything in the room, just walk near all the containers and listen for the sound. light sources for the ridge would be the flash beacon and the black light because neither of them can activate squiddles which there are a lot of. I prefer the flash beacon because it can light up the entire room and you can just know what your surroundings are immediately. After grabbing the crystal there will be three different hallways that lead to a door and you want to go to the door that has the green light. These next few clips will be examples of what you should do every time you enter a new room in the ridge. Going to a locker immediately after using the flash beacon ensures that you have a hiding spot and that you know what the room looks like. You should expect there to be an angler in every door you enter, which means you should always wait in case there's a delay. Also just like I mentioned earlier, checking for void mass is like insanely important. Good people behave differently in the ridge, but it's actually way easier to see them because it's just a big light underneath the door that none of the other doors will have. If there's a speaker in the way of where you need to go, then you should always wait until you know nothing is coming. You also want to make sure that you never have to hide anywhere where you're in the range of the speaker because it'll just blow up in your locker. Ifestation is pretty much the same in the ridge as anywhere else, so if he comes in, then you either want to get to the other side as fast as possible or retreat to the room behind you. Retreating is almost always going to be the better option because of how long some of the rooms can get in the ridge. Once Ifestation can't see you anymore, the first thing you should do is listen for an angler. Overall, the main strategy for the ridge is having patience. Here's a quick list of everything I just mentioned in case you want to screenshot it back while you're playing. Next I'm going to show a full ridge playthrough and then I'll get to the ending searchlights encounter. I'll just hold on to that for you.
it's important to remember that pressure is a completely randomized game so there will be times where something might actually be unavoidable or there might be something way more difficult than it should be which means that like there's no actual guaranteed way to win this game but these tips I'm giving you will make it a lot more likely that it will happen. Alright, so now we are finally at the ending searchlights encounter, whatever you want to call it. The biggest thing you want to remember here is that it's kind of similar to the ridge in which you need to have a lot of patience. Just do not rush anything. The first thing you want to do when you get here is turn your graphics down to at least 7 if it isn't already because the screen is insanely blurred if you're at 8 or higher. Also, this footage is outdated because since the newest update, holding any light source out when you're in water slows you down a ton, except for the flash beacon for whatever reason. Once this searchlight comes out, you should wait for it to pass by to avoid accidentally getting caught. And then first thing you should do is go up a bit so that you can see the whole arena and get an idea of how many uh, wires there are just uh, on the surface. The wires can be easily spotted from far away because it's just a yellow flickering light unlike the green ones that are not going to flicker. If you're playing this solo, once you finish the third wire, uh, a second searchlight will spawn and it will always spawn near the cave that you came out of at the start. While you're fixing wires, you should always remember that you can exit at any point. There's really nothing wrong with exiting every time you do a click. After the fifth wire, another searchlight will spawn and this one will always be in between Lucy's legs. At this point, I would probably uh, try to stay low and underground as much as possible unless you need to fix a wire above ground. In this clip, you can see that I uh, had three wires already planned out and ready to be fixed immediately, which is a pretty good idea for the final few because of how dangerous the searchlights can be. After you fix all the wires, uh, there will be a giant beacon in the middle of the map and also a beeping sound. You just have to go to the middle of the map. You can see you just go in and pull a lever and then there's a very specific route you can take that brings you straight back to the exit. Once you pull on this lever, you just want to go to your right and then take another right and then just go straight until you see a shipping container that leads you up. When you're coming out of the shipping container, you want to be careful because sometimes the searchlights can group up above it, which really sucks, but they didn't do that in this clip. So this part of the game might actually be the scariest. For your first time doing this, I would recommend like just staying back until you really understand what the pattern is like doing. There are two hiding spots here. One is closer and to the right. It's like a submarine and one is farther to the left, which is like a little plate or something. Going to the submarine that's to the right is pretty dangerous because you have no sight of anything that's around you. So you kind of have to guess which is not good. This part you'll always kind of have to take a risk because I said before there's like getting a pattern but there really is no pattern to this at all. The only thing you can really base anything off of is the fact that every time they move they stop for a bit. So you can look around, wait for everything to stop moving, and if it's in a good position, then make a run for it to the next hiding spot. You should take as much time as you need on this part because if you rush it, you will probably die. This tiny little plate here tends to piss me off a lot because to get out of you can see right there to get out you need to like squeeze yourself through there's no easy way to really get out of there but once you do that's literally it you're done now I'm just gonna play the whole thing through for you to watch if you want to see like the thought process and all the steps I took 
Also, just as a side note, the wires can spawn like on the very outer edges of the map sometimes. So if you for some reason can't find the last few or you're having trouble with any of them, just they can be in some pretty ridiculous spots.